Hi guys, I've been really excited to do this video. Uh, welcome to the Honest Perfume Reviewer. Um, thank you so much for the comments on yesterday's video. I just found it really entertaining to read them and to have these discussions about what makes a good perfume reviewer. And I'm trying myself, of course, to be the kind of reviewer that I appreciate. <laughs> and I know I don't quite live up to um, some of the other ones that I follow, but I think that everyone kind of adds something. And then you watch uh, different ones and together that it gives you kind of a uh, a whole picture like of a fragrance that you might be interested in or learning more about a certain note or category or perfumer or whatever angle you're looking for and they all have their kind of um, or not all of them I don't, but they all have their kind of uh, strengths and maybe some of them also weaknesses and of course so do I um, okay so what maybe I've been kind of waiting to review this fragrance guidance by Amouage because I wanted to wear it a little bit more but then I realized, you know, right now is when people are looking for reviews and they might be blind buying this and I don't think people should blind buy and it's better that there are reviews out there than that they're not and maybe I'll get a few more followers now if I have a review of it quite early. And I have worn it now a few times. Um, I just sprayed some more on right now just to kind of just refresh my memory. Um, I've been kind of a little bit back and forth about this fragrance, but before I jump into what it smells like, I just want to tell you that it was created by Quentin Biche, and this is the first, I think, the, the first that he's done for the House of Amouage. Uh, and the House of Amouage, as you probably know, is from Oman. Um, it's an Oriental Arabic house, and Guidance comes in a bottle shaped like this, only pink. And I was kind of wearing pink today, and I thought today is the day to review <laughs> Guidance, because it's also, to me, quite a pink fragrance. Actually, this pink top, I'll just kind of show you what it looks like. Um, you tie it here. It's, it's, uh, it's so old. I've had it for like 22, 23 years since I was pregnant the first time. It's kind of a maternity, <laughs> a maternity top. Um, the brand is called Big Belly. I don't know if they exist anymore, but it's really good quality. It's not even worn out and I've worn it so much. Uh, anyway, um, so Guidance is a part of a little collection of four fragrances where two are marketed towards women and come in these little more chubby bottles. Um, really cute, I think, especially this Overture, I think is beautiful. Um, and they're called, uh, this collection is called Escape. Um, the two marketed towards women is one of them's Guidance, the other one is Lineage, comes in like a turquoise bottle, and the other two I'm not as familiar with. Uh, they're marketed towards men and they uh, are called, um, let's see, Search and Purpose. And I find it kind of funny, um, a contradictory, that they would call this collection Escape, because, I mean, these names are, at least I come to think of like, you know, finding yourself and coming home to yourself kind of in Search and Purpose and all this, and Escape, for me, that's more like, you know, like Escape Behaviors, um, would be more like maybe, you know, scrolling on your phone or addictive things and, and just kind of escape to me is kind of a negative word in, in when it comes to like, uh, like more meditation. I'm all into that kind of stuff. I think escape is more like when we don't want to meet our own feelings. So I find that a little bit strange. Anyway, Quentin Biche is the perfumer for this uh, particular fragrance. Uh, it's the first he's done for Amouage. Um, I'm pretty sure of that. And it is... He's also kind of a really hyped perfumer right now and is, I think, a little known to make kind of like far out fragrances that are a little bit odd and maybe not for everyone. I mean, Ganymede is his creation, for example, from the house uh, Marc Antoine Barrois. Um, and he's also made the other ones from that house. I think they have like five fragrances there now. He's also the man behind Delina, which is a little bit more of a people pleaser kind of fragrance. So this is not the first kind of people pleasing fragrance fragrance that he's made because I do find that this fragrance is kind of uh, an effort for Amouage to kind of reach out to the masses. And there's a really interesting article. I don't read many articles on perfume. I mostly watch reviewers, but I think maybe that's where I should be going for my information because these guys who write these articles, they are really knowledgeable about perfume. And this one is written by Igor M something Kov. You have to look for him. I think the article is called, this is not, or this is a French perfume. And I mean, this is Omani house. Um, but the, and I agree though, I think he has really wrapped it up well and described this fragrance in a really good way. 
And um, this is a French perfume. I do think it smells, at least part of it smells like a French perfume. So he says, according to Igor, he says that this is a perfume that has like three significant parts that you can really detect. And I agree on all three. The first is that it's a, a nutty uh, gourmand with pear. I wouldn't have been able to say that it's pear, but it has a gourmand quality. And then there's a section like that where it smells a little bit like a powdery, sophisticated French perfume, um, kind of like Chanel Number no. 22 or Number no. 5, or that's a little bit like floral aldehydic type of perfume. Um, and then there's like it has a ultra modern woody ambery base, something like that. So there are these three kind of layers or sections in this fragrance. It also has like saffron. It has olibanum, which also is the same as frankincense. I can tell that it's like it has, so I've been a little bit on the fence about this fragrance. Like the first time I wore it, I'm like, I'm not sure about this fragrance. It has, I think it's that middle layer, the French part that smells a little bit too designery for me. And I get a little whiff of like, like scratch and sniff books. And I think it smells kind of like peach. Um, and I think that's because it has osmanthus. I don't know if I told you that. It has saffron and osmanthus. And, and osmanthus is known to smell a little bit like apricot and peaches, kind of in a very soft, kind of leathery way. Um, there's a certain overlap with Journey Woman and Sunshine Woman, and they both have the note of osmanthus. And today, actually, my scent of the day is Journey Woman. I wore it. Um, it's still going strong here. Um, incredible performance. Uh, I used my last drops today. I might have to get a bottle. I know someone who's selling a bottle secondhand, so I'm kind of like talking to her a little bit about maybe letting it go. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but the more I've worn this guidance, I wore it the other day, like all day. I like had it all over me, like maybe six or seven sprays, and it performed all day long. It has great, great performance for a perfume of this type. Like, I don't find that to, like French powdery floral aldehydic perfumes like last all day, typically. Um, but they have it also has this little bit it has ambergris actually and akigala wood, which I'm not familiar with. I need to find out more about that. And also a sandalwood note. I mean, it's it has uh, vanilla and ambergris as well. I couldn't tell that there's ambergris in here. I just think this fragrance is like re it's really feminine. It's, I mean, a, a guy, I guess, could wear it. I mean, Sebastian, the perfume guy, really likes it. I could tell, like, he did, like, a first impression. He said he got, like, a bubble gummy feel from it. And I can I can totally get that, um, that it has, and I think he was the one that said, maybe someone else said it, that it's a youthful fragrance. Like, it's, it's not old. It's like a younger person would wear this. And I can totally get that. It's not, like, a grandma-ish kind of fragrance at all. Um... I think that Igor was the one who also said that this is like the first time Quentin Beach is like put in a conservative kind of role. I mean, I think Delina is a little bit conservative. I mean, that's a little girly, maybe, maybe a little bit more overly feminine than, than guidance, but that he's put in a, this conservative role, like he's going to make something for the masses where he maybe rather would make something a little bit more that has like a surprise element to it. This one is a little bit more of a people pleaser. I think like anyone would like it. Um, a good reviewer always tells you the price point, and so I'm going to do that. This is not cheap. This costs, uh, I mean, I know the price in Swedish crowns, but it's about $400 or 400 euro, roughly, like like the other most expensive Amouage fragrances. I'm sure they have things that are even more expensive, but like this line, there are some that are a little cheaper and some that are a little um, more expensive. Um, some of the ones that have been out for a long, long time, you can find discounted sometimes. I think it's really hard to find Amouage discounted right, or Guidance, sorry, discounted right now. And over to our woman, I'm a little bit happy to see that it's not, you're not able to find this discounted because I paid full price for this and it really hurt because it was really expensive. Um, I was able to get a hold of this little sample by sending somebody else a few uh, drops of 400 from Zerjoff she was interested in. So happy to have these, um, this little squirt. She said she'd sell me another five, a five milliliter decant because I don't know anyone else who has it yet over here. But it is, I have really, really enjoyed this. Um, I would say that this is like a wedding fragrance. This is a, um, this is a perfect gift. I would say it's, I don't, I don't think anything is a safe blind buy. Um, but 
this is as close as you can get uh, with amouage. I don't know if I said it has nut, it has hazelnut. Uh, I only said nutty gourmand. Um, it's all these notes come together really beautifully. Um, I really enjoy the dry down a lot. The beginning is maybe a little bit, see I don't typically like fruity fragrances and this has a lot of fruit in the opening. It both both has like the, the pear um, that I cannot detect as pear um, and the osmanthus which is also kind of a fruity note. But when it dries down, it really, I mean I like the opening as well. I just wasn't sure. I was. I, I kind of wasn't sure about it first because I thought it smelled kind of designery. I mean, I, there's so many floral, fruity designer fragrances that kind of all smell the same to me. And this one has a little layer of that. But I think the the olibanum, you know, the incense, the ambergris, the labdanum, all that kind of saves the composition and makes it interesting and keeps it like a little bit spicy, sort of. This Akigala wood, I'm, I need to look into what that is. I, I believe that they're he uses that a lot in his compositions. Did I hear that somewhere? I, I don't know. Or if it's if it's like an amouage thing. I mean, Alabanum for sure is the amouage thing. I mean, 80% of their fragrances have this note. And they have, mm, I just think it's, I recommend it. But I don't recommend a blind buy. Um, I think it's too expensive. I don't think it's worth $400 because I have other fragrances that are really good. But I'm still, I'm kind of like, I have an urge. I want it. I really want it. And the bottle is pink. It's really pretty. Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of hoping that someone will get sick and tired of it. And maybe we can swap it and maybe I'll swap half a bottle. Because this, I'm still not... I don't know. This Overture woman is still not kind of doing it for me. I don't know, guys. Uh, some of some fragrances, you know, you get bored with. Maybe this one will grow on me more. I, I don't hate it. I don't love it. I paid too much for it. I, I regret it. But anyway, um, those are my thoughts on, on uh, guidance. And um, I don't follow Quentin Beach. I Do you guys follow Quentin Beach? And Oh, one other thing that, that Igor mentions in this article that I found really interesting is that it is kind of new in the fragrance industry. And I'm sure you've noticed that the market or the audience, the, cl the customers are kind of following the perfumers around rather than just following, you know, like the brand, like just following everything Amouage is doing. Someone, someone might develop an interest in Quentin Biche because they like his style or they like, you know, what he, what he puts together and you kind of follow the perfumers. And many of the reviewers actually have, you know, they mention the perfumer's name and uh, sometimes like Frederick Mall even puts the perfumer's name on, right on the label. And I think Essential Parfums, uh, they do they do that too. Um, I just see it more and more, and I think that's nice. I really like that. Olfactophiles always talks about the perfumer. Um, I, I find that really interesting. But Quentin Biche is not someone who I'm like, oh, I think I'll like everything he does because he's made some really kind of odd <laughs> fragrances. But he's made some really like normal, average, not unique fragrances too, like Blouse from YSL, like Delina. I mean, you might find Delina unique. Um, to me, it's just... It smells like candy to me. Just couldn't be bothered. It's too. I had a decant. It was just too boring. There was nothing to discover in there. I mean, that rhubarb note maybe, but I don't like rhubarb. So, so I find I found it like just not very interesting. But then he's made things that are kind of a little bit more difficult. Um, yeah. So Quentin Beach is not like my top perfumer kind of pick, but um, you know maybe he'll. He's made one more out of these was it purpose or search I think he's one made one more of the ones in the in this collection I can't remember which one it is but um, I'd be thrilled to hear your comments about guidance if you've tried it uh, have you also felt this kind of back and forth feeling do I like it do I not um, it wasn't I mean I liked it at first sniff I'm like oh kind of like that but I wasn't then when I wore it I'm like hmm I don't know I don't know about this it's like it has that fuzziness that I find a lot with Osmanthus, and I don't, Osmanthus is not a favorite note, but I really think it works here. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts on guidance. Um, please comment, that would be great fun. All right, that was all for today, guys.